how can they call on him unless they believe? How can they believe if they've never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless somebody tells them? How can they hear about Jesus unless somebody tells them? There's church live streams, church TV programs that you can leave on for one hour. And you won't hear one thing about Jesus. Life improvement, time management, the importance of learning to say no so that we can keep our calendars and schedules. That's all good stuff. But the gospel is the good news of the person of Jesus Christ dying and shedding his blood to break the power of the devil. Somebody's got to tell them. Stand up, my friend, from Reno, Nevada. 39 or 40. How many people told you about Jesus when you lived in Reno, Nevada? Zero. 39 years. Nobody ever told him about Jesus Christ. That, 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 that is a spiritual felony. In America, we're not in Karachi. We're not in Islamabad. How? How? You want to know how? I'll answer my own question because people think somebody else is going to do it. You got to treat it like, you know how Paul treated? When you read Paul's life, you'd have thought he was the only Christian on earth. He was acting like the entirety of the Great Commission rested on him. God never had to tell him to go do anything. God had to tell him when he was going to Asia, hey, don't go here, go here instead. So he just acted like there was a continual green light until he got a red light from God. I'm just waiting to hear from the Lord. What do you want to hear? You want me to go to your room and yell this to you personally? Go into all the world. God will break off your piece of the Great Commission. Stand up, Brother Killer. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm saying it because I'm not commissioning you to do something I don't do. I led him to the Lord. Jesus saved him. I saved him. I led him to the Lord. I met him in Maui. No no shirt on. Burn mark on his arm. What what, what burned it? Car accident. And then drug burns too. I didn't go, well, I'm here preaching. I stay away from him. That's the story of the Good Samaritan. Stand up with me, Carl. I want you to stand up. I I feel safe here with you here. I like when someone has killer tattooed on their knuckles. Show them. When he got saved, I don't know what the statute of limitations are and stuff, but let's just say all of his income he had to walk away from. Everything, every way he made money was not legal. To be a Christian, he had to leave all his income behind to follow Jesus Christ. I told him about Christ for years. I couldn't get him to come. To, hey, come hear me preach tonight. I'm not going to be like the other two guys in the story of the Good Samaritan. I heard he's a drug dealer. I'm the other way. Oh, you're a drug dealer. Jonathan Shuttlesworth, nice to meet you. <laughs> drug dealers are great people to get saved in, in the ministry because they're excellent at networking. They're self-starters. You can't join a drug dealing company. I'm telling you the truth. Brian Tomes that was here this week that pastors in Massachusetts. That's what he was. Slung meth in Nevada. They get saved. They start slinging Jesus. Get motivated. Then you, he finally, why did you come hear me preach the one night? Well, what happened is I wasn't going to any services. He invited me every night. They did two weeks of revival services, and they invited me every single night. And you know what I told them? I told them I was coming, but I never showed up. So the second night came, they seen me again. They said, hey, where are you? Where were you that la- uh, last night? I said, oh, I couldn't make it, but I couldn't make it because I had a lot of drugs. I, I couldn't go nowhere. Because of my drug. Everything to do in my life was about drugs. So if anybody was to invite me to some place that was not to do with drugs, I will tell them I will show up, but I won't show up. So the second night, they invited me again. I didn't show up. The third night went by. The fourth night went by. The fifth night went by. Finally, the last night. Nobody probably has heard this story before. But today is the day I'm going to tell you this story. It's so powerful because I was not going. The Lord knew 100% of me was not going to that revival service. And when I got to that revival service, I supernaturally got there. An angel of the Lord took me to that service supernaturally. I didn't want to go to that service. I was not going to that service. And literally, I smoked my last crystal meth 20 minutes before I ended up at the front row of that revival service. I smoked up my last crystal meth. And it's like I was gone. And all of a sudden, I appeared in the front row of that service. Supernaturally. How much did you like my preaching when you first heard me? Oh, not at all. (laughs) So actually, when I ended up on that front row, as he came out, everybody knows how evangelist Jonathan preaches. He preaches powerful, and he jumps all over the place. And when he came out jumping, this is what I said. Who is this skinny, white, howly guy jumping and yelling at me? And literally, when I sat there in that chair, I wanted to punch him in his throat, but I could not move. 
That same angel that took me to that service is the same angel that kept me in my seat from punching this man. And I'm so glad that this man was full of the fire of the Holy Ghost because I could not touch him. And here I am today, transformed by the power of the Holy Ghost, 12 years, set free from crystal meth and ferami. I'm telling you, if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. All it takes is one call upon the name of Jesus Christ, and your life shall be transformed.